My name is Andrew Becker, and I'm joined today by Ann Dalton. We're both consultants at Red Hat, and today we're going to be talking with you about Ansible Tower and Ansible Tower workflows. So Ann, something that's common in IT organizations is pushing out updates, whether that be patching servers or upgrading middleware components, say Apache or JBoss EAP. Um, so before an organization adopts Ansible Tower, how is that traditionally done? Sure. So traditionally, this is done in really siloed environments. So for example, you might have a virtualization and operations and a middleware team who are all kind of depending on each other to get the job done. So if a virtualization team needs to capture a snapshot, the operations and the middleware team are left to wait before the operations team can deploy or the middleware team can test. This can cause a lot of issues if you run into a failure and a lot of late night phone calls, as I'm sure you're aware. Oh yeah, I've been on those. And that really does sound painful. So how does Ansible Tower help uh, make the situation better? So Ansible Tower allows for more flexibility and collaboration. So with Ansible Tower workflows, these three teams can all be working on writing an Ansible playbook together. Nobody's waiting on anyone to finish another job. Once those playbooks are written, Ansible Tower simply allows you to string them together. So any deployment or patching can be done with just the click of a button. So that sounds great, and it seems like we're saving a bunch of people on these teams a lot of time. Um, but I've been around long enough to know that sometimes things don't always go as planned and we've reached failures. How do workflows handle those failure cases? Sure, that's the great thing about workflows. So let's say that something happens in capturing the snapshot. You can trigger a workflow to send an alert to your virtualization team that says, hey, we're creating this fix, or Maybe it's a manual intervention that's needed. Or maybe something goes wrong later on in the process. Say when you're in the deployment phase, you can simply run a rollback workflow that goes back to a previous version so that the customer doesn't lose any downtime on their system. OK, so you can also automate these uh, standard uh, fixes that you might have to apply manually, but the steps are well known. So I can see how this can save a lot of people time on all of these teams. Are there any wider benefits that adopting workflows can bring to an organization? Absolutely. So what we've drawn here is actually the same as the UI for workflows. So you can see that it allows a lot of visibility to these teams. So for example, the middleware team can see what the other teams are working on and write better test cases to test for more functionality. OK, and I can see that if they're collaborating together in these workflows, you start to break down these barriers between these separate teams and have more of that DevOps cohesion that we're all looking for. So what if, I, what if the people that I'm working with want a little help um, adopting workflows? Where, where can they go? They can start by contacting their Red Hat account executive to set up a discovery session or going online to redhat.com services to learn more about how our training and consulting services can work with you.